my whole thing right now is about being unstoppable, about really reaching inside and grabbing something that's in there that you might not know is there. Alrighty, welcome, 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 guys, to another episode of the Unleashed and Unstoppable Show. My name is Todd Pierce. And my name is Dean Martin. We've got a great guest on today, Brett Campbell. Um, I've known Brett for about twelve years now. Met him through the health and fitness industry, and I've seen his journey go from there to massive in business. And I've, it's a massive pleasure actually to have you on board, mate. So thank Absolute you. Pleasure to, to speak with you, lads. I'm, I, I was saying a little bit pre-recording. I wish I had a cool background like you guys. For those who can see this. Um, look, so today uh, we're gonna we're gonna go a bit bit left center today, and and we're gonna kind of enter this with with virtually no context and kind of see where it goes, which would be a lot of fun. Um, so let's start it off in a way that we always do, though, by getting Brett to introduce himself, what he does, what he's about you know, the journey to being here right now. Myself, I know that you do have uh, a lot of experience and expertise in digital marketing and business. So, mate, I'll chuck the ball to you. So, if you want to introduce yourself to our audience, what you do, what you're about. Cool. Um, how long we got? Uh, <laughs> I'll give you the elevator pitch. Firstly, to give you context so you can get a bit of an understanding of, of how my brain works, I'm an insatiably hungry and curious human being, right? Um, which is the guiding light for basically everything that I do in life. Um, you know, I, I, when I was 16, I got kicked out of high school, became a cabinet maker, fell into a job that I knew from day one that wasn't for me, um, but I stuck at it four years too long. Um, got to a point where, you know, I was this young man and I wanted to uncover who I was, what I was about, why I'm on this planet. I felt like, like there was this burning desire inside of me that I was destined for something. And it felt like it was something great, had no idea what it was, had no mentors around me. There was no one who thought like me, you know, where I grew up, all my friends thought very differently to me. I was the guy that was encouraging people to jump out of the trees into the water and let's do this, let's do that. You know, I was, I was the Pied Piper, so to speak. It was just because I was so curious about everything and I wanted to figure stuff out and I wanted to do as many things as I possibly could. Um, got to a point where uh, I the, the fire was burning inside of me so much that I had to do something and take massive action. And, and I grew up in New Zealand um, in a real tell. small town. Sorry? Couldn't tell. Couldn't tell just in here. Just I've been speaking a lot the last few days. My, I find the only time my Kiwi accent comes out is is when I'm drunk, or I'm or I'm feeling a little bit lull of energy. Um, so we'll have to do something about that today. But long story short, uh, I jumped on an airplane, moved to Australia to the Gold Coast here. Um, at school, at high school, I was good at three things. Right, I was good at woodwork. I was good at PE. Yep. And I was good at lunch. I wasn't going to get paid to eat. And at the time, um, you know, I was, I, I was already tried the woodwork thing. I was a joiner. I was a cabinet maker. And the only thing left on my resume was PE. So I was like, let's become a personal trainer. And I love the gym. So a, a passion. And I was like, you know what? I, I love working out. Um, let's just go and be a PT. So I started as a PT, um, trading time for money. That feeling again came up. I was like, yeah, this isn't what you're supposed to do, Brett. Right? You know when you know. Like I was, and, and that's why I've been able to do, you know, in business a lot really quickly because I've, I've been learning from these, um, I won't call them merit lessons along the way. Yep. Um, so I quickly uncovered um, this thing called the internet because I was actually walking out to train my clients um, for my night sessions, you know, the old three till 9 p.m. type um, session. Mm -hmm. um, and I walked past my flatmate's computer and there was this ebook on there. I was like, what the? <laughs> a picture of a guy standing in, in a, a picture next to him where he was squatting. I was like, he's doing a squat. She goes, yeah, it's a workout program. I just bought it $37. I was like, oh my God, my life changed from that moment. Cause I was like, firstly, I was like, why aren't you training with me? You know, you're giving this guy in Canada money. And I'm like, geez, I'm, I'm, I'm working my ass off here at the gym. But immediately in the same thought was like, this is the vehicle. This is how I'm going to help reach millions and millions of people. Yep. Right. Um, Cause as a kid, I was the joker. I was the one who wanted to make people laugh and smile and all of that. And I just, I wanted to be on stage and I wanted to, you know, just be an entertainer, so to speak. And I thought this was my way to be able to get a, get a specific message out there. So I became obsessed with digital marketing. Um, and that put me on the quest of, of psychology, persuasion, influence, and helped me answer, or helped me started to answer this question. The one question that I want to know, 
All right, there's one question that I'd love to have the answer to. Why do we do what we do? Mm. Uh, why do we do what we do? Like that to me is, it's, it's a question that has sent me on a quest, right? Books, seminars, you know, self-improvement, um, reflection, et cetera, et cetera. Really trying to uncover that because I think it's just, it's something that resonates with me so much. And I know when I said it to you guys, you're like, oh, yeah. It's, it's a question of why do we do what we do? Mm. But there's answers for it. There has to be reasons and answers for why we do what we do. But what was this quest of building an online digital product sent me down this garden path of, of so many other things, which opened my eyes up to a bigger, wider, deeper world out there. Um, and I just became really good at it. So I became really good at marketing, became really good at digital marketing. And, and we um, you know, created a fitness company at the time, fastest growing fitness company in the country. We had, we're selling thousands of online products. We started a franchise, we created an RTO. We're the, the, one of the first pioneers in the fitness space that you know, do overseas retreats and so on and so forth. So built a, re a really um, substantial fitness company and something pivotal happened to me in my life at that time. Everything was going fantastic. Um, and I uh, rang my friend back in New Zealand. Um, she'd um, just gone through um, breast cancer and um, she, I was back over there on a, on a holiday and um, she said to me, she goes, oh, you won't believe this, but I've, I've been diagnosed with brain cancer now. I was like, oh, my God. Like, because she'd gone through breast cancer, made it through the other side. Um, and because I wasn't there, it was like when I left to, to come over here to start my new life, that's when it sort of happened. So it's that whole thing out of sight, out of mind. And when you're not really around it, you sort of, you know, you're not really paying attention to it. Um, and when she said this, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a different um, you know, I'm going to look at this differently this time. You know, I'm going to be a part of this and I want to make sure that I'm, you know, being able to be there for them as much as I possibly could living in another country. Um, and anyway, she was going through brain cancer. Um, oh, she was going through the um, chemotherapy and, and I rang up, I said, Hey, you know, and this was sort of in the peak of where everything in the fitness company was just going bonkers um, to the point where, you know, we're, I was building the franchise from, 9am to let's call it 5pm when the team was in but I'd get up at 4am and I'd work on information products from 4 to 9 and then after you know after 5pm when the team went home I'd be working from 5 to like until I passed out 9 10 p.m you know doing inf information products and so forth so I was, I was burning the candles at, at all ends yep. but the rewards were real you know was was the thing that was keeping me going but I, I gave them a call I said hey when does she come out of hospital um, and they said She's out on Tuesday, and this was Friday. I was calling. I said, "Okay, cool. Well, I'll come over soon, and you know, come stay with you guys for a week." Um, and I was talking to my my mate, who's her husband at the time. And he goes, "Yeah, cool. Whenever you want to come over." And I said, "Okay, cool. Well, I'll jump on. I'll book a ticket for a couple of weeks." And I hop off the phone, jump on the computer, good old Jetstar. I'm like booking a ticket, and I was just about to press place order, and I was like, <clears throat> something didn't feel right. So I hung up, rang up my mate. I said. Dude, I'm going to come over on, um, on Monday. And he goes, what, when? I said, oh, in a couple of days. He goes, oh, really? I said, yeah, everything's cool at work. I, I, you know, I was sort of in a good position where I could do what I wanted. And um, jumped on, booked the ticket, arrived over there on Monday, um, arrived a little bit late. So um, she was coming home on the Tuesday. I ended up getting dropped off to the house Tuesday morning. Um, and my mate walked down the driveway to meet me, you know, big old hug and a cuzzy bro handshake and and um he, he looked different i was like what's, what's up he goes oh she just had a really rough night because she actually came home on the monday they, they brought her home earlier she just had a rough night sleeping and she's asleep right now and i'm like well that's cool you know i'm here for a week let's go in anyway they, they lived in a really small timber like imagine a timber cottage basically right so really small home um and the she had to be in a hospital bed because she still needed to be elevated due to the, the chemotherapy um, and the hospital bed was too big to fit through the hallway of the house, so they had to put her in the lounge. So I walked through the front door, and, and I'm talking the lounge might have been you know, three and a half metres by three and a half metres, so, you know, your typical bedroom size, really, so it wasn't really big. So in one side of the wall, there, she, was, she was perched over there, and, and um, she was asleep, and I'm sitting down on the couch, um, and she, you know, she started coughing, and she woke herself up and I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going to sit down next to her, held her hand. 
Um, her hand was like ice cold too. I've never, never felt something like that before. And I, and I was holding her hand and her, her eyes open. She's like, Oh, like she, she went from being in pain and she was like, Oh, thank you so much for coming. Um, and then I was like, of course, absolutely. You know, I wouldn't miss this. You know, you're, you're out. We're on the mend. Everything's good. Um, three hours later, she passed away in, in, in the bed and I was sitting there watching this unfold. And I was like, oh, what the fuck just happened? I was like, this isn't supposed to happen. This wasn't part of the plan. You know, you're, you're supposed to be coming home to get better and you're supposed to be coming out of this thing. And I took on the role of, you know, hey, it's all right. I'll, I'll sort out everything. You know, her family, her mum and father and brother were there and my, my mate, her husband, we were the only ones in the house. And I was like, everyone was obviously hysterical as you would be. And I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll sort this out. I'll organize everything. I'll get things sorted. So I went into like get it done mode for that entire week. It was really surreal when I think about it too, because even to the point where like I bought a dress shirt over and it was, I was, and I wasn't going to, cause I wasn't planning on going out at all. Um, I was like, oh, I'll just bring a black dress shirt. It's like you that wishing that you had though, right? Made it. Yeah. Wait for that. Like this, this is, this is the thing, right? I bought this black shirt and I was like, well, I've already got, clothes for a funeral right and i'm like this is this is crazy my ticket like i didn't even have to extend my ticket and and we had a moldy um funeral which you know the body comes back and is, is at the house for like four days before the funeral and so on and so forth like everything was almost like it was planned that that was supposed to happen and um i was on the plane on the way home and i was sitting there and i just literally burst into tears like i was just flood of overwhelming emotion sort of just erupting and um, it wasn't, I wasn't crying because of um, her passing because I'd, I'd already spent an entire week mourning, right? It was because I realized that I was doing something that I knew I wasn't really supposed to be doing. Mm. And it was quite a deep, profound, you know, moment for me. And, and that's where um, the birth of, you know, another business I have called Unleash Your Greatness, right? Which is this whole... Um, you know, and I wrote a book around it called Right Now. And it was this premise of, you know, why not you and why not now? There's things that we want to do in life and should be doing in life, but we're not taking action on it. And we need to start taking action right now to take steps towards living that. And that's that's why I resonate so much with what you guys are doing here. And I think it's it's a message that can't be stopped. You know, it needs to be continually talked about and discussed. And you know, people need to hear things a thousand and one different ways sometimes before it goes, oh, shit, you know, that makes sense. Now I'm on that path. Now I'm going to do this. Um, so from there, there's, there's a few strategical changes that, that I ended up making in the business. And, and um, one of the big things was I wanted to help coach and mentor and teach others how we've been able to do what we've been doing. You know, because I've been getting asked for you know, years leading up to it going, hey, man, how are you doing this? Like, we were dominating Facebook. Like we literally dominated it. Um, you know, we're, we're getting like five cent, 10 cent leads. It's just like the return on investment was just crazy, you know, like absolutely crazy. And I'm a teacher at heart, right? Like I love showing and teaching people how to do stuff. That's what gives me the fire inside is, and the most energy is when I'm sharing and teaching with others, you know? Um, so I started a consulting company um, and, you know, I was teaching business owners how to do it. But as you know, you can lead a horse to water. Um, you can even jump on the horse's neck, right? And you can push the horse's head Open down the underneath the water for they've still got a drink, right? Yeah. Um, and that's what it sort of felt like for me. It was this, oh, man, I'm giving you my best stuff. Like, I'm not hiding any secrets and there's nothing behind the paywall. It's like, here it is. This is what you got to do. You've just got to do it. Um, and, and it got to a point where people were, hey, can you just do it for me? Can you do it for me? Can you do it for me? I'm like, no, why would I do it for you when I can do it? You know, I'm doing it for myself and I've, you know, I've got multiple different businesses at a time. Um, but then again, it was that calling, that intuition. I was like, oh, wait on. You know, I'd already spent millions in advertising and, and you know, achieved some pretty good success in the advertising space. Now, given that was only in the, in the fitness and the consulting and, you know, the, um, you know, the sort of the, the health and wellness space essentially and the make money space. Yeah. Um, but I was like, marketing's marketing, psychology, psychology, you know, um, we're all humans who make purchases of certain things. Yeah. So um, I ended up deciding to, to open up an agency 
um, you know, myself and my business partner, we, from day one, we're like, first goal was to become the number one digital marketing agency in the country in 2018. Um, we took out the best social media agency award for Australia and New Zealand and, and um, we're, we're on the quest. So we're, we're three years, three years and another 30 days. Um, achieved some, some amazing success, being able to help, you know, um, hundreds of businesses achieve amazing success as well. And, and the difference that we are with, with Klaxon as our digital growth agency, which is what we are now, is that we don't build ads, we build businesses. Mm. And that's a very, very distinct difference. Very different, yeah. So before I take over your whole podcast, that's good, that's I'm, gonna enjoyable. That, I'm gonna give back to you guys in the studio. <laughs> nah, mate, that's been, oh. that's been a really, really good chat. It's a good learning at the end of the day as well, study how many times we go through each day just letting things go by and you know not trusting our intuition or anything or taking action then and there yeah. and yeah, just missing opportunities. Yeah, I felt I, I felt where you were going with that story before you got there and I started mm. to get the old tears well up. I was like, oh, I can know where you're going with this. <laughs> but I, I got a couple of great points where I'm, I'm going to go with uh, from this. We can talk about business as well, but I feel like going first to wards you know why are we doing what we're doing yeah so i just recently um i did a post recently right and you know some people said that's so controversial why'd you why'd you post what you posted and i did a, a, a post about my thoughts on all these rights happening in america right now yeah huh? and like i'm very firm in my convictions i think about things just like i'm assuming you do as well i think about things a lot i'm like why am i believing this why am i like why am i really so convinced of this thing before i i often share it with people and I basically said, look, I think it's bullshit what's going on with all these rights. I think it's rubbish. I feel like there's uh, small groups of people that are taking advantage of a tragic situation, do bad behavior. I said, it's an injustice. It's, it's appalling. There's no excuse. It detracts from what's happened. And then I proceeded to talk about other things and I got political. I'm like, talk about, you know, the divisiveness of the certain political parties in the media, how they show one side to make you feel a certain way. And like, I talk about like, we're never going to find unity right which is i think a very important thing because like for me i i treat someone based on their character not on their color of skin always been like this if you're a good person then great if you're a dick then well hey we're a dick and like i said like so many people are getting so angry and you can see this spreading like it's in it's in every single country have kind of band together and said you know justice for for george floyd which is 100 percent accurate like the people that did the crime need to be have justice served and for me, my sense of justice is quite deeper than other people's. I believe people that do that kind of thing should have uh, severe justice <laughs> put back on them, right? But we won't go there. I digress on that. But I was like, you know, we will not come together. I'll get your thoughts on this too. We will never come together if we're always allowing ourselves to be manipulated by media and political parties that have the sole intention of three things, which is more money, more power, more control. Because I thought about it a lot before I wrote it. But like, that's what it comes down to, right? Money, power, control. Why else would they divide you? Why else would they want to continually spin a narrative that tears people about, that tribalizes them? So anyway, I'll chuck it to you. What are your thoughts on, on that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> not sure what door to open here, um, but but let me let me start with this. Okay, I, I think as human beings, we all have a personal responsibility to pay attention or shut the fuck up. Right. And what I mean by that is paying attention to what is happening and look at it from every side you possibly can. Okay. And this is where, you know, I said to you guys, I like, I'm a bit of a deep thinker, you know, but before I go out and spurt some, you know, some narrative or my opinion, I'll either frame it with, Hey, look, firstly, I don't know what I'm talking about, but here's my opinion. Yep. Right. Which I think is super important. There's too many headliners, headline readers out there who, you know, they've got basically a paragraph in them. And once that paragraph's written, they've got no further substance to the conversation. It's like, I'm fucking tapping out, I'm out of here. Because all it takes is for someone to come in with some research and some stats and you're like, mm, didn't even know that existed. Oops, my bad, I'm out. Yeah, pull the record, right? But it comes back to education. And firstly, I'm speaking from a white man's perspective. I, I did grow up though in a black community, a majority black community. Um, yeah, which was fantastic. I loved it. Um, you know, really created a, um, you know, some core values of who I really am today as a human being and respect that I have for all people. But you got to look and no matter what group 
you're, you're looking at there's there's rotten apples and everything right yep. but back to the point of we have a personal responsibility to be able to educate ourselves on something before you open your mouth mm. and it's actually okay to not open your mouth and probably a couple of beefs that i've got at the moment are people who are out there going if you're silencing on this then you're with the oppressor it's like come on man like you you know people people saying things that they know nothing about is just as dangerous yeah right i feel now it's pretty clear that we all and you know 99.9% .9 of human beings would say what's happened is wrong okay but again it comes back to this thing of education i the other day or yesterday actually um cuz you'll see people posting right black lives matters yeah we agree on that yes 100% absolutely of course we do not even would debatable. you also would you also agree that all lives matter non debatable as well fact right so it is all lives do matter now Whenever I would see someone write Black Lives Matters and then someone would go, all lives matters, I'm like, yeah, okay, I can, I can agree with that. Until I seen a different perspective. So someone that I know wrote something yesterday and I was like, oh, fuck, I haven't thought of it like that. Mm. And this is where education and perspective is really important. But being humble enough to be able to see things through different perspectives, different lenses, Absolutely. Right, is, is super important. So the, the post went along the lines of, you know, um, yes, Black Lives Matters, absolutely, 100,000%. Whenever you post All Lives Matter, what you're essentially doing is you're protesting Black Lives Matter. And I'm like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Because when you say Black Lives Matter, you're not saying or you're not implying that no other lives matter, or you're not saying Black Lives are more important matters, right? It's Black Lives Matter. Take it for what it is. And it's a fact. So it changed my perception of certain things because I was like, now I look at when people go, all lives matter. I just go, ah, man, you're just not educated right now. You're Because you're right. Yeah. Every life matters, but you're just not educated right now. So people need to, to start looking at educating themselves around this. And they need to start educating themselves with history and black history and what it actually means. And, and how was this world even created, right? It stems back there. It's not just now with pr police brutality, et cetera. You know, it stems back of oppression for, you know, hundreds and hundreds and thousands, thousands of years, right? Mm. So there's so much to this. It's, it's not most people out there running around on the streets have, have really no idea the core depth of what they're really trying to protest. Yep. And why I've sort of kept slightly silent on it is that I don't know enough about it. Right, yeah. but I know enough about human psychology and the, the, you know my quest of why do we do what we do. Mm. But I, I understand why certain people do certain things. Do I agree with the looting? Absolutely, one hundred percent, positively not. Now the other debate to that, the other side of that, is if people were just to peacefully protest, would that create enough noise around this mm. for this to be a thing? Right? Would it? Do we need to have smash windows to create a larger impact? Now, I'm not saying we do. I, I, I would say we, we shouldn't, and I hope. Question worth posing. But it's, but it's that when you start to go, okay, cool, I'm going to be a bit of an investigator around all of this stuff. There's some things that you can clearly vehemently say this should not be the case. You know, store owners getting beaten up, standing outside their shops. That's just thuggery, right? And no one in any way, shape or form should even try and justify that, no matter how oppressed any human beings ever been, in my view, right? But it comes back again to educating ourselves and paying attention. So like the people out, like, I don't know if you guys remember, but recently we had this thing called coronavirus, <laughs> right? Holy shit, right? Like, okay, that's another topic, but... People were out there spouting and saying, you need to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this. Based off what though? Who have, cause your, cause old mate said it or your friend Sally said it. It's like, you, you need to pay attention and, and start researching certain things. And unfortunately most people don't. We are headline readers, which come back to the media. I love, you know, I love yesterday that. I seen, love that I seen a bloody video. I seen a video of, in MSNBC showed a graphic of Los Angeles and it was straight out of a fucking trailer of World War Z. Wow. I'm like, no, you didn't. No, you just did not do that. What are you even thinking? Right? Which leads, where the hell, like, that just distorts 
truth so badly that now we don't even like, I am honestly very, very, very cautious of what I hear on any media and what I decide to believe. So hard. Which is sad because there's supposed to be a resource of journalism of people who dig for the truth, but you're right. It's now all about political gain. It's about money. It's about power. It's about status. And um, it's a game that is always going to happen. Like there's no way we can create unity on, on this planet. That's if you're expecting that to ever happen, you're, you're fucking blind. Right. Mm. We need it. You need the parallels. You need the positive. You need the negative. Right. You, you know, you, you need the happiness. You need the sadness. You do need, um, you know, when you look at the hierarchical stat um, setups, right, of, of how the world actually is. And yeah, it's, you're right. Someone like Jeff Bezos is going to be the richest man on the planet, right? But you've got to look at and go, is that fair? Is it not fair? It's like, well, I mean, he's created fucking a million jobs. He's servicing hundreds of millions of people. It's like, do you think he does it? I personally think he does. I believe in that level of capitalism. Yeah. Would it be nice for Jeff to go, hey, I'm going to donate a lot of my money back to this, this, and that? And he does, right? But people who just get upset about it and... What, what, and this is this... Fuck, you, you touched on something here too. Like, <laughs> give someone the right to expect someone else to hand over their hard-earned cash. Like, yeah, nothing does. Who the yeah. right to have that kind of expectation? Yeah. It's not okay. And, and I like the thing it's is... It's entitlement. Like, the thing you mm. said before, which I, th- I just want to touch on for people watching and listening, which I, I, I really love, and I'm, I'll tell you why, is the concept of paying attention. So... I, I wrote that post and I, I do think about things a lot when I write things. And I, I talked about four different kinds of protesters in my post. I said, there's ones that are doing it the right way. There's ones that are taking advantage of a bad situation to be bad, of be on bad behavior. I said, then you've got the professional protesters that go to every single protest, no matter what it is, because they get significance from it, a bit of moral superiority just so they can impress their friends. And I go, and then you had the interesting one, which most people don't think about, which are the paid ones there to stir the pot because more evidence came out and they found that the right, uh, the, the places where the rights were like these big pallets of bricks were delivered the yeah. day before. Like, hello, like people yeah. don't think like, uh, and it's funny, you think about like movies and desensitize desensitization. Like we see espionage and stuff like that constantly in movies that like some people I feel like today they go, that's ridiculous. That's a conspiracy. Well, no, it's smart. It's strategic. And like, if you had the money, you had the power, you had the connections, why would you not move things in the way that you wanted to by utilizing what's happening in the world? Mm. I mean, you, you look at like Antifa, right? Yep. I mean, that's a radi- radicalized group. And whether you think it's them or not them, you got to look at the bigger play here is that the Democrats want Republicans out of, they want Donald Trump gone. And that's from day one. I've never seen this ever ever happen where there's one side of, of a country wanting to remove someone so badly. Everyone right? liked him before he was president. <laughs> well, yeah, that again, debatable as well, but not so much because you're talking his audience was, you know, a hundred million. Now he's got, you know, 8 billion people looking at him. Yeah. Right. But the point there is that you've got to look at this holistically. You've got to be open. And I don't like to dig too much you know, too far down the the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories, but all they are are really just different ideas and different thoughts of how something might be. And it's really easy to pack a narrative with with things to support your story, right? Which is what you've got to also be aware of. We could say, oh, there's packets of bricks on the streets. Oh, Antifa would have definitely done that because they're trying to overturn, well, the Democrats, you can go, oh, Hillary Clinton did that because she wants to get Donald Trump out of the office because if, if the country is burning then it's donald trump's fault right yeah. donald trump's fault so we need change we need revolt we need a new president clearly guys yeah. right so you look at that and you can see where it, where it really stems from and it's it's quite scary that you know it is a game it is a game um and you're right there are people who are pay, paid there are companies that you know or hidden societies that are funded by certain people to go and do certain things um, you know, even I've heard stories where there's actually police officers who are who are out there, you know, doing damage as well, creating demonstration and, and you know, causing harm and so on and so forth to ignite it because that's all you need. You just need a few people igniting something, and then the loose cannons will just go crazy. Like a match to light the fire. Absolutely. So you know, people, the Democrats, whether you want to blame 
Donald Trump for coronavirus and not acting fast enough. I mean, or now it's the riots. I mean, I'll tell you what, it's going to be an interesting uh, presidential election come November, I'll tell you. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll I just, be paying close attention because there's things that you can learn from it again, right? It's about education. It's, you know, I've learned so much over the last three years of just him being president. Like I watched his, his coming on in and, and followed all the debates and followed all the policies and this and that. Should be a political analyst right now. But <laughs> I do it because we need to pay attention to it, right? Because we need to know what's sort of happening in the world. We, we live in a bubble here in Australia where we're so fucking lucky. Right, we are a real lucky country, man. If you look at the stats that have just come out um, with co countries that have been most financially hit, Australia is like sitting in the top. We're the, we're the luckiest, you know. When you look at the graph, it's we've we've been able to sort of separate. And that's, I guess, the beauty of living on our own island, right? Yeah. Um, but there, there's some things that need to be shaken up, and sometimes it does take critical things to happen. In the case of my friend passing away. Yep. You know, um, in the case where the fire inside of me was burning so much that I had to jump on a plane to go start a new life to try and find who I was. Mm. But in this case, for for change, it might need to be these rights and they might need to last two, three days and there might need to be a cash. There'll be more people. There'll be... No, I won't say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bring yourself in, Brett. Digress. <laughs> um, but the, the impact of this will be astronomical for the rest of the world yeah and i pose a question to one person on my um on my comment thread before we move on to something else because it's always fun talking about politics but um i i, I said a question right? i said i said who do you fight against because he's uh, a friend of mine who's a black fella and he's just like you know he was very much in his perspective and my whole thing is like i i'm like look I, you don't have to agree with me that's how i communicate to people. Like, you don't need to agree with me i don't not trying to persuade you. You have your beliefs, I can have my beliefs. And you know, if we're both reasonable minds, we can have different opinions and still respect each other. And I'm like, the question I want to pose to you is like, you're fighting back. So that's this whole thing. And he came from a very um, us first them mentality. That was, that was his perspective. And I'm like, that's okay, that's good. Sometimes you need a bit of like feistiness to create change, 100% agreed. And I'm like, we agree on a lot and disagree on a little. The question I want to ask you, I'm like, what do you fight back against though? Because right now it's like you're fighting back against the state. I said, but do you fight back against the state that you feel is oppressing you? Or do you fight back against the media that perpetuates a narrative that continues to increase racial tension and fuel the fire? Mm. Like, where do you fight back? And mm. it, it's like you said right there, right? There's all this chaos. The easiest people for America to blame is Donald Trump because he's the mouthpiece yep. right but like it's cause and effect absolutely and, and you're spot on and and this is the other part to it is you know you need to educate yourself or keep your mouth shut mm. but if you do educate yourself you need to know who is your enemy like really and why is that your enemy or why is that your opposing you know view right like you and you need to take information from both sides. You need to watch Fox News and you need to watch CNN. Yeah, yeah. Even though watching one of them might make you feel sick in the stomach because you disagree with it <laughs> so um, viciously, but you have to because when you've already decided and you're like, on this or on that, it's like this pack mentality. It's like, it doesn't have to be like that. There's no way any country should ever be run with one party versus another party because there's policies I believe in in a Democrat society and also in a Republican society. Yep. But it shouldn't have to be a draw the line in the sand and you're over here and I hate everyone else who disagrees. It's like you look at it in sporting. Like you look at the, the Europa League, right? The, the soccer and football over there. It's like they literally fight each other just because you're wearing a different jersey. It's like you could probably be best of mates if you actually met each other in a pub, you know? Jersey, like huh? <laughs> one jersey. One jersey changes, I'm going to kill you based off a jersey you're wearing or a colour. And it's, it's just... It's that pack mentality, and that's that needs to be, you know, addressed as well. Yeah, you know, but once again, good luck changing that human nature, right? You're not gonna, yeah. But so, but once again, the answer I feel isn't changing it. The answer is understanding it. Absolutely. Like education. Education is everything. We need. You need to be humble enough to go. You know what? I can't be fucked learning about politics. So I'm just gonna remain neutral. Yep. You yep. know, like majority of the people out there who are hating on Trump or are hating on Biden comes from a place of they're just 
they, their famous actor that they love said this or, you know, yeah. Trevor Noah said this on the, on the night show, on the daily show, whatever the show he's bloody gotten and said this, so it's got to be true. Right. And that's that awareness. It comes back to self-awareness of knowing, you know, and having a bit of an internal radar an internal, internal ethical moral compass that you're being guided by when you hear certain things. I call it like a glitch in my matrix, right? Whenever, and this sort of feeds back to intuition as well, but whenever I get a glitch in my matrix, something doesn't feel right or something shifts it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to pay attention to that. You know, like I found myself getting really frustrated with when I was watching Jordan Peterson being interviewed on, on a number of shows. And I'm just like, and I watched myself that Kathy Newman, um, uh-huh interview which i know you'll know about i I was sitting there going come on mate fucking say something back like it got to a point where i was almost barbaric and i'm like just slam her down like she's a fucking idiot why is she saying that like he's not even saying that shit but you know i'm sitting on this couch internally i'm I'm thinking that i'm like holy hell brett why so then i go why am i actually getting annoyed by that and that comes back to my own internal values of i don't like someone lying and i don't like someone you know trying to make (laughs) someone else look bad and and so it, it, it's, it triggers off our own internal narratives and stories that we have. And we just need to be aware of that and yep. go, oh, this is starting to happen, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's self-awareness of, of what you truly believe in. And then when you've got your own internal moral compass, you'll be able to be guided by that and not someone else's. Yeah, this is something, obviously, like I'm a hypnotherapist, right? So I've been doing it now for a decade. And like, we work with beliefs. Beliefs are something we work with a lot, right? And like, Lots of people. I'll tell you two stories, right? Two funny ones. So I've got a friend. He's Russian. Um, we won't hold that against him. He's a, he's a fast guy. But um, I'm a dad. I can make dad jokes. Um, so anyway, he he can't stand Trump. Now, like, I just got it. <laughs> like, like me, my, me, my wife, we're independent, right? We're not left or right leaning. We just observe. And um, like, I, I, there's things in both sides that I, I like and dislike. But once again, I remain independent. And like, I've, I've been independent with Trump as well for a long time. And I find it very, very interesting. People are either for Trump or against Trump, right? Yep. And, and for example, my, my mate who I've known for a long time, right? Since I was like fucking 14, which is a long time. And I, he goes, oh, I just can't stand that guy. He's such an idiot. And it's like, we, we got a little group, Dean and I, with him. And I'm always posting pro-Trump stuff in there just to stir the pot, right? <laughs> because he can never actually answer what it is about him specifically and this is the whole question when did you decide what are your beliefs where did those beliefs come from when did you question those beliefs and how do you know those beliefs are still true what's the merit to your belief your conviction your feeling towards xyz your attitudes and he can't answer it he always just rattles off a whole heap of generic abstract bullshit and that's how you know that you're spouting in my opinion that's how you know that you're spouting regurgitated ideology from other people when you can't hone in and specifically go, I believe this because of X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, and that makes logical sense, then you're actually not spouting your own beliefs. You're spouting shit from other people. So I know that you'll want to say something about this. Oh, mate, (laughs) absolutely. And, you know, it's, and this comes back again to being informed. Yep. Right. If you're not informed, because I'm I'm open. So I'll put my thoughts out there is I'm more pro-Trump than against Trump. Yep. Because I can only find more things that I'm pro about with what he's doing and how he's done it than things I can't. So whether I want to jump into the, what I feel is the, the normal or the cool club or uh, all these Hollywood elites are saying they hate him. This now I'm like, cool. You're everyone can be entitled to their belief. I'm also very open to being changed and also very open to hearing dialogue and things that, um, you know, I'm not, wanting to be Donald Trump's friend, right? He's, he's a president who is in control of, you know, running a country. Hardest job on the planet, if you, mm. if you, if you, you know, if, you know if, if I've got to say anything about it, I think it's the hardest. Other than that, being my wife, probably second. Right? <laughs> um, I'm sure she'd agree. Hardest job on the planet. But, like, it, you, you're hanging every single decision off a person who he doesn't make all the decisions either. That's the other thing. Right, it's just that level hierarchy, hierarchy of responsibility that it always yes. lies with him. But people are spouting shit that they don't know. Like you watch um, Stephen Crow- any Stephen Crowder um, videos where he goes, like he, he has this segment. Do you know Stephen Crowder? 
No, probably may do without the... So he's, he's more right-leaning, yep. but regardless whether he's right, left, or fucking up or down, yep. the point is his content is like, he has a segment that's like, Trump's not racist, change my mind. Yep. And he'll sit down with people and actually have a conversation and want to have a debate around, tell me why he's racist. Oh, it's because he called the virus a China virus. Now, um, if under racism classification, that saying that is racist, then I'll go, okay, it's racist. In my classification of racism, I don't feel that that is actually racist. Yeah. Again, happy to be change my mind as yeah. to why. Like I did with this whole all lives matters. I'm very, very open to being um, looking at a different perspective. But you're right, people can, majority of people, and I'm yet to see any real interview um, where people aren't just screaming that he's a racist, he's a racist. Tell us why he is, though. Just help yeah. me understand that. Because mm. if, if there's something that I'm not seeing, I want to know about it. I want to, I want to add something here too before you, you continue on. Like I am exactly the same. I like to look at both sides of the coin. Even just this morning, I went researching online, DuckDuckGo and on Google, because obviously they both show you different things. But um, I went I went looking right. I'm like, cool. What great things has Trump done? What bad? No, I want to know the full picture. Yeah. But the, 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 and once again, for people watching and listening, you have to be aware, this isn't just in politics, this is in life. We've got something called confirmation bias. Like when we have something that confirms our suspicions inside, we go, yes, that's it. I knew it. And it gives us that like instant dopamine yeah. rush. And it's like, yes, I was right. But there's two sides to every coin. So I wrote, I've got some friends over in the States on my social media and I saw one of them write something. It was, um, and look, some people might want to castrate me from what I'm about to say, but whatever, this is my opinion. You don't have to accept it. Let me premise it properly. Um, I said in this, 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 this guy's post where Barack Obama was like giving this big old statement about, you know, racism and stuff like that. And like, once again, it's that internal little flicker, that thing that says, you know what, something's not fucking right here. Mm, and I commented, I've I done a buckload of research in advance before I, I did this, this comment. And I said to this guy's post, I said, mm, I don't feel Obama should be saying certain things. Um, in saying that, I, and this is my language, I said, I used to like this guy a lot. Yep. Extremely charming, charismatic. However, over his term, I begin to dislike him. Yep. That was my language. And I had all these people start attacking me on this post. And I continued to give my reasons. I'm like, okay, so I'm not American. I'm Australian. Let's talk about your statistics. Based on a recent study, 60% of Americans believe that racial issues are worse after Obama left office. So his term, this is not me, this is the research, right? 60% of Americans say, you know what? We feel that he did worse for black America than good, right? Um, and I'm like, I'm not making this up. This is the statistics, right? And then I looked into it. And it's like, well, what did he achieve? And then I, you know, when you go down the dark rabbit hole, right? You see the good things and you see the bad things. And like, I'm going to digress right now because I'm going to go on a rant. But like, you have to get both sides of the coin. People ha go, oh, D Donald Trump's done this. You know, give me a kiss, grab the pussy, whatever the bullshit is you want to say. It's like, okay, well, what good has he done? And I had another guy on one of my posts say, you know, it's all Donald Trump's fault. I said, okay, cool. Donald Trump's done great things and he's done bad things. I said, have you looked at both sides of the coin? And nine out of 10 times, people don't want to find anything that contradicts their internal beliefs. So they don't yeah. go looking. Because when you get contradicted, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm back to square one. Yeah. This, I've done so much work, even though you might not have, to get to this belief. Like, if you're not open to being challenged and wrong and that that's why i'm able like i won't flip like immediately like oh geez total different perception if i hear another perspective i'll let it filter through and i'll let it filter yeah. through and i'll think about it more and i'll look for supporting evidence to support that um and i'll i'll look for ways to go but how could this be wrong mm. like even yesterday right um and especially when it comes to major things like i'm not like this with every thought that i have throughout the day but things such as yesterday when i seen the post about all lives matters i was like what are all the what are the pros and cons to this? Like you have to look at it from both sides. Yep. You know, and you really need to before I jump on out there and go, oh yeah, fuck, everyone's protesting against Black Lives Matters when you say all lives matters. You've got to look at it from all perspectives. You've got to gather enough intel, enough data, and then you can you can come up with you know what I would call a a, um, a confident internal narrative that you would like if you're not confident saying it to anyone or 
you know, and I know some people don't speak because they're scared of the critique, which I totally get, you know, like, especially when it comes to polit politics and, and you know, how discussion the world's governed. Beliefs. But it, you know, it, it doesn't even become a discussion. It becomes an all out barrage of whoever's the noisiest and whoever can say the meanest yeah. things until someone stops. And that's the unfortunate thing. Like no matter what someone does, like even if, um, even if Donald Trump came out and said, America, I'm sorry, I've made some mistakes. I'm going to, here's what I've done and here's what I'm going to do about it. People would castrate him. Yeah. Told you fucking he was wrong all the way. And no, no, it's like, there is nothing that that man or any prime minister can do. Like there's people who hate Scott Morrison right now in the country. I'm like, mm -hmm. like him or hate him, you know, he's, I've, I feel he's done a, done a great job helping get Australia through this. Um, there's always things you can pick at. I mean, geez, if people looked at us and things that we're doing and decisions we're making, we're just not under that bigger spotlight, you know? So we're not going to get critiqued as much. Big Dean's hair apart. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? <laughs> had an Asian guy cut this on, so Todd's always like... Oh, that's like racist. Dude, you can't I don't say like, that. Uh, we're talking about like massive situations that are going on right now, but in my thought patterns is that um, this brings it back to everything that we're ever doing, like how small it is. Like if you take it back to how we started this podcast, it was all about the psychology and asking better questions, get better answers. Like why is it that we do these things? Like there was once upon a time where people fully believe that the only way we can get around is by a horseback. Like why, why is that the only way we can get around? Why can't we maybe build some mechanical stuff to that are on wheels that rolls us around or something like that? Like all planes, right? There's, always someone the better the question the better the answers and you know because i'm from a health and fitness background we have this conversation all the time is like you know there's some people out there that don't like chocolate and that's okay the world still works right mm -hmm. so i know we're talking about massive situations politics and things but the better bring it back to a whole the better the questions we ask about every situ situation or that we've got going on no matter how big or small it is the yep. better the answers we're gonna see at the end of the day and i want to contextualize for those watching and listening, so I'm always thinking about the people that are watching and listening. I want to contextualize. Is this being recorded? Was that? Is yeah. this being recorded? Oh shit! Let's stop, mate. I'm, yeah. not, I'm <laughs> I'll take back some of the things I said. I didn't yeah. mean it. <laughs> I want to contextualize this yeah. for those that are watching and listening because, as is very apparent, <laughs> like some people hear one thing and then boom, their 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 amygdala hijacks the system and they hear nothing else. So I want to contextualize this whole package of information and really boil it down to what we've actually been discussing right now. You know, and that is values and beliefs at the end of the day, because, you know, there's a, a famous uh, saying that says, you know, don't talk about religion and politics, right? And the reason why, and this is just my opinion, and you can share yours as too, but in my, my belief, when I've really thought about what religion and pol politics is, it's really a discussion about values and beliefs. And like values and beliefs are things that I work with in a therapy setting, done for years, but it's also values and beliefs that create wars, values and beliefs that create separation. Like when people have differing values and beliefs, that's what we're fighting about. <laughs> so what's your thoughts? Mate, you're spot on. I mean, it all comes back to, again, this whole internal moral compass that we have. And it's like, what do you actually believe in? And it's okay to say, I don't believe in God. Hmm. I don't believe in God. It's okay. Don't, don't castrate me for it. It's like, mm. you know, I've had an experience where I don't feel that that's the, the narrative I'd like to, to attach myself to for everyone else who does fantastic. I have a lot of friends who are Christian, right. And who believe in that. Mm. And what, what I really, when I look at that, you know, <laughs> we're going to open up the door of religion here, conversation. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> we've already got apology, we'll do them all. <laughs> yeah. I've spent my life asking myself this question um, <laughs> is what does it really mean? And it, and it comes back to the belief and it's the, the comfort of that's what helps people get through. Yes. Right? So I call it, it's the acceptance strategy, right? It's so I have an acceptance strategy that allows me to get through life. It allows me to be able to, and I'll share that with you. My acceptance strategy allows me to get through life really quickly. It allows me not to hold on to things that are holding me back for so long. Um, and it's simply this, right? It's not a man in the sky, right? It's everything is happening the way it is supposed to happen because it is. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing else you can do about it. 
Nothing. Try and unreconcile that. Try and give me another narrative that, that busts that, that potential acceptance strategy. Everything's happening the way it's happened because it is, and it's supposed to. Yeah. Right? So when you know that to be true, like, oh, okay. So these, this, you know, coronavirus was supposed to happen. Cool. It's just part of the, it's part of the board game that we're playing, right? Which is life in this case. Mm. And that's where I, I, I think I spent about an hour yesterday talking about different types of strategies that we should have in life to, to be able to navigate this. Cause I truly think it is when you've got strategies, everything is a strategy. Brushing your teeth is a strategy. Yep. Try for the next seven days, brushing your teeth with the opposite hand. Mm. You're going to feel how uncomfortable it is. We as humans need comfort. We, we need the ability to be habitual in a lot of the things we do. And if we're not distorting that or we're not consistently trying to upgrade that, then we're just, you know, living in this laborious hamster wheel. Mm. Right. But for me to overcome fear and hurt and, and I, I don't need to go into deep. Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll need to resort to meditation to help me think through it a little bit deeper. And, you know, sometimes you might need, you know, some NLP techniques, etc., that can help you get there. But for me, 99% of things I'll be able to get through is when I just go, hey, Brett, mate, the acceptance strategy is everything is happening the way it's happening right now because it is and, it's, and there's nothing else you can do about it and it's supposed to be like that. Yep. It has to be like that. There's no other way it can be because it's already been. Mm. And when you, when you feel that, because you hear people say, oh, it is what it is. Cool. That's a 30,000 foot narrative that just got thrown out. That's a nice headline. It is what it is. But what does that mean? Yeah. Is what it is you go to the deepest level of that, break it down, peel the onion back and you're like, Oh, there's nothing else that I can think about other than it was supposed to happen the way it happened. Cause it happened. Yep. And you can go, cool. Now let's move on. Exactly. What's, and what's the next steps? What that does too, as well is it, that narrative, right? If you choose to accept it, cause that's what it's really about. Um, what that does is it, it alleviates the need for control. And like the lack of control is the thing that people get uh, high anxiety from, right? Control though is having the lack of control because mm. you're able to control not having control. Yeah. So that narrative, right? What it does is it allows you to start to detach from that outcome, if you would, right? Which then frees up your mental space, frees up your emotional energy. So you're not always being fucking burned down, if you would, I guess, to mm. a degree. You can coach yourself. I've just become really good at coaching myself yep. because I can step out of Brett Campbell's feelings of being hurt and the ego being, you know, hurt and I don't have to always be the man and I can critique myself, you know, and I shared this yesterday, actually a strategy um, that I do. So I, I have a specific meditation that I'll do and I'll go to a place that I've created, you know, sort of my, my um, recovery area. It's my, my peaceful space that I've created um, uh, about, I think it was 12 years ago when I first sort of started meditation. Yep. Um, and I go there and I invite myself, my older, wiser self into the scene and seek advice from him. Yep. And fuck, I'll tell you what, sometimes, man, it's just like solved. And, I'm, and I come out of the meditation, I'm like, I feel like I should probably be angry for longer, but I don't know. The answer's there, right? And it's that acceptance. That's a really good self-hypnosis technique that you just yeah, discussed right there, by the way. Perfect. There you go. Didn't even know. Well, it's funny. <laughs> we, we kind of talk before we do wrap it up and some of being cognizant of the time. Um, we, we, we kind of have touched around business stuff a couple of times now, and you've just put a couple of words in my head that I think's relative. So it kind of brought me here. So obviously, you know, you're doing advisory work with clients. You've got clacks and you help businesses, you know, get their digital marketing right. And you go beyond that. You help them grow their damn business. Yeah. Um, COVID-19 chucked a massive curveball and hit people off the metaphorical horse. I guess what would you what would be what would be your best advice for for business owners that are kind of, you know, been affected a bit by this and want to kind of mm. get things back on track, working well. What's working right now well for your clients in the digital marketing space that maybe, you know, people can kind of take on board to yep. recover. So first thing I would recommend is you use this as the biggest reset opportunity that you've ever been gifted with. First and foremost, because there's a lot of businesses who have gone out of business that should never have even been in business. Yep. Okay. Now that's not everyone, but I say a lot. Mm. It, there's a lot that, you know, and, and this is coming from a number of conversations I've had with people like, you know, how do I rebuild my business back up? I'm like, let me ask you a question. 
were you happy in that business? Do, do you, do you want to even be in that business? And like, well, actually I'd rather go and do this. Well, there is no other time that's going to happen that I hope that you're going to be given this gift. 2020 is not over yet, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, we, if we take note to all the headlines going out, the aliens are coming next. So. Yeah. Well, maybe we clothes, need to build products product for aliens. They're going to need product. They're going to need clothes. Yeah. But, to, to the point though, where I feel there's an opportunity here for a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs to have a bit of a reset and figure out what they really want to do and, and reconstruct what their business could look like. That, that might mean pivoting product services, um, ways of how you've been doing it. But again, this is acceptance of going, it's okay that whatever you were doing is no longer working and we need right. to take a bit of a pivot yep. because there's opportunities everywhere. But unless you're open to the opportunity, it will never come to you. Yep. So I believe that's a fundamental thinking pattern that people need to start understanding right now because there's the opportunity because it's going to start getting busier when the economy opens, you're going to be back to square one again. Yep. Secondly, there's a shift to digital, a massive shift to digital, you know, for a lot of businesses. And in the next six to 12, well, next six months, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy out there because businesses are going to realize that digital is the most important thing because what happened when you had no foot traffic into your business? You know, we, we had a number of our clients who shut down their shop, but they had, they've got paid advertising, a local florist here, right? They mm -hmm. shut their doors, no foot traffic. They relied 100% on foot traffic. They jumped on board with us like literally two weeks prior to COVID, you know, lucky for them. And they sold out of their flowers every single week <laughs> through online um, you know, applications or just, you know, et cetera. And I was just like, well, you need to be moving to digital. It's happening. And business owners are not treating digital the way it should be treated. It's the most important part of your business. Absolutely. And I'll, happy, I'll happily debate any person on that yep. until the cows come home and back, Absolutely. right? Until they have cow babies. Like to that point where I'll, I'll debate that because I truly feel it is the most important. You can have the best product on this planet. If no one's seeing it or hearing about it or wanting to put their hand up and go, hey, I want to know more, you ain't got shit. Yep. yep. I agree one hundred percent. That was probably the biggest question I kept getting when COVID hit. Was oh, are you are you okay? Are you upset? Uh, are you going straight into Centrelink? And I was like, no, we're actually really good because it's forced us to think differently about what we do and how we do it. All righty, mate. We need to we need to, to wrap this up though because we've got <laughs> live coaching sessions after this. Um, but it's I've been got a podcast in about ten minutes. Another one, but we're good. Yeah, no, this has been this has been a pleasure. I've had a really good conversation. We 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 stayed true to the. The original intention which is to go wherever it went mm. but look at it, the whole picture <laughs> look at it, the whole picture like rather than just looking at oh they're talking about massive situations politics and things what do you what can you learn from that as well correct so. look at what we're really talking about which were psychology beliefs values yep. systems like actually being a critical thinker so there's a lot of stuff in this podcast that we've covered but guys we do have to wrap this up um brett mate if they people want to reach out to you follow you find out about more what you do how can they do that uh online uh, so you can find me anywhere anywhere on the socials. Just You can go to brettcampbell.com.au. Um, I've got a couple of podcast shows as well. If, you've, uh, have, if you're not sick of my voice yet, jump on, have a listen to those. And um, Very much similar to what we've got going here. And it's um, one thing I will say that, to your point there was that I, I think it's a healthy thing to be having conversations about a number of different topics um, because what you can learn from one industry yeah, you can actually utilize it in your own industry. So when, when it's, it's all comes back to ways of thinking and how you're thinking through things and, and the more you can expand your, your conversation, your vocabulary and your, your ideas and, and ways that you navigate yourself throughout the world, it will massively increase your business as well. 100,000 billion percent. Mm -hmm. And that's not a real percent because there's only a hundred for those people out there who are like, Oh, there's no more than a hundred. But anyway, over to you boys <laughs> awesome all right guys anyway for those that are watching once again if you love this hit like hit share tag anyone that needs to yeah. hear this stuff anyone whose gears you want to grind for fun tag them in here as well and we'll see you in the next episode bye-bye thanks guys